Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Rhetoric. Better Will is your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show today. We have a great show for you today, as usual. But of course, who comes first, folks? It comes to you. But anyway, let me tell you first a little bit, of, a little story today. A little story today. I, am, as you guys know, I'm in Washington D.C. And this morning we woke up, and what did we wake up to? A snowstorm. And you know, this Texas boy doesn't see this quite often. In fact, he never sees the amount of snow that he saw today. And I just went out there and had some fun, took my daughter to, we had to drive through the storm. Everybody stayed home. Most of the people stayed home, right? But we drove through the snow to get her her therapy. You know, they called several times. Ashley, are you going to be coming in for therapy? Because a lot of people are canceling, but you know what? She wants her therapy. She got her therapy. So we went out there and we took pictures as we crossed in the snow and all that good stuff. Folks, it is a wonderful winter wonderland out here. I mean, it looks to me like about a foot of snow or something like that. I don't know what it is. This is not my kind of thing, but we had a snowy day. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get busy. Welcome aboard AVQ is the first one that's listed in there. But for those of those others that are there, come make yourself known. We want to talk to you. We want you to partake and be a part of the conversation. So let's go ahead and get busy, folks. As I'm speaking here, I am queuing up a few other things. So bear with me as I queue. Bear with me as I queue because that is what we do. That is what we do. Anyhow, here we go. Here we go. If you are on YouTube right now, give us that thumbs up. We want to have that thumbs up. Let's see. Should I repeat them? No, 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 no. I have everything up. I got all your postings, my brother. I have all your postings ready to go. Uh, E2247, welcome aboard. Anyhow, 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 let's get busy. Trump and his children refuse to be deposed in tax dodging investigation. The New York AG quietly subpoenaed former President Donald Trump, Don Jr., and Ivanka in December to force them to testify. They all resisted. What do you expect? Now they are fighting in court. If it were anyone else, they'd have already been arrested for contempt of court. These guys are thugs that belong you know exactly where. Uh, Michael Rodden also writes, In 2022, let's tax the rich. Ten billionaires added $402 billion to your fortunes in 2021. Wealth inequality escalated during the pandemic. While most of the world suffered, the wealthy took advantage of the public health crisis to line their pockets. Like I always say, a large percentage of billionaires are psychopaths. And I don't say that lightly. They are psychopaths. Anybody who knows they have just needs unlimited amount of money, money they could never possibly spend. And they're out there trying to get more and more and more. They are psychopaths. All right, Michael Rennan also put out there, patriotic millionaires tweeted, history paints a bleak picture of what happens to extremely unequal societies. We know what, take a look at France and a, pl- a, lot of, a lot of other places, especially when they reach inequalities at our level. For the well-being of rich and poor alike, it's time to confront inequality and choose to tax the rich. If you don't, then all the talk at Davos won't change what's coming. It's taxes or pitchforks. I wrote several articles about that several years ago. We're still waiting for the pitchforks to develop, and they're coming. Uh, enough is enough. Outrage as Big Pharma as Big Pharma celebrates 2022 by hiking prices on 442 drugs. Big Pharma is price gouging well above inflation rates, while tens of millions of Americans struggle with paying for necessary prescription drugs as we in the U.S. pay double to quadruple what the rest of the first world does for health care, yet are getting poorer outcomes. Build Back Better had price control provisions to curtail such greed and suffering, but it's being blocked by Joe Manchin and the obstructionist Republicans. Even as supermajority of Americans want this legislation to go through, it is time, folks. It is time it is time. It is time. We have to educate people. We have to take the lies away from them. We have to let them be, forget about I, I was on Daily Coast yesterday. And even on Daily Coast, we have liberals talking about there are certain things the government do better than the private sector. And, 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 making, and, and I'm not going to argue with the, the, the concept in general because, uh, you know, if, uh, I don't want the federal government running a pizza shop at all. I want individuals 
running a whole ton of pizza shops out there with different things to offer, etc. But healthcare ain't one of them, folks. And we have to teach people that healthcare in the for profit sector, in that regards, profit is an expense and an expense on whom? An expense on you. All right. Happy 2022. It's nice seeing you again after about a week from politics. So, Egberto, what are you looking forward to this year? For me, it's the slim chance of seeing a naked eye supernova as a binary stellar pair might collide and explode, creating the third brightest object in the sky after the sun and the moon. You would come up with something like that. I hope you know one thing, Brother Rudnan. When you see that exploding star, remember, that has occurred several billion years ago, and you're just seeing it today. But hey, we love it. Hey, you would love that. Let me tell you what I, what I see in the future, or what I want. My goal is to keep doing politics done right. My goal, my aspiration is that slowly we start to build geometric progression on all Americans so that we finally take control of this country away from those who would do it harm by with income inequality, wealth disparity. And you know what's interesting? In order to maintain their income inequality, what they do is they put us against each other. So my goal is to make sure that as we promote the truth, we don't disparage those that have been hoodwinked. As we promote the truth, we, don't, we give others a place to land. We give others that opportunity to say, okay, I see the light without having to feel I've been conned, I'm embarrassed, so I'm going to hold on to my conned position. I want people to know that we're welcoming everybody into the big tribe to say, folks, we are going to do it together, left, right, anarchists, Whatever you may be, they're all the small, tiny amount. They're all using us. And I hope we realize that. E2247, Humberto, thanks for using fact checking efforts to reduce proliferation of fake news, resting on assumptions that folk want to believe and share true information but need to weed out falsehood. Exactly. Paul Fleming, my brother, checking in. Welcome aboard, Paul. BP Alpha, can we shoot for global utopia rather than just? you america you know what when i say let's make america utopia brother if america becomes utopia the world becomes utopia because it would be on policies beneficial to the entire world e2247 says some psychologists believe that reasoning didn't develop to always point people to rational answers since prohistoric times reasoning may have developed as a tool that supports the dynamic the group dynamics that are necessary for life and livelihood and the group dynamics ultimately though is the right answer right if all in the if most of the groups happy happy doesn't mean that which makes the super rich happy which is having a lot of material things happy could simply be how the nomads used to live happy could be how the indians uh, the natives used to i mean people think that because we have microprocessors or whatever we're so much more advanced we need microprocessors and so forth because that's what we've learned to make us happy. But if sitting under the stars and having and, and breaking bread at a fire is something that makes us happy, what else is there to life? Why is a co I love these computers. I love it. That's what I've learned to love. But is it the only thing? It's not. Money is no form of wealth. Peace is prosperity. Agreed. B Alpha E2247 says. Sharing of false news has less to do with ignorance than with partisan political affiliation and the news available. But the partisanship only makes sense. Only makes sense if there's a result. Daniel says, yes, y'all, bring out your pitchforks and take care of those evil psychopaths. A -O -L -L -O -L. Paul Fleming says, I can't wait for my mugs to arrive. And when you come, when you get your mugs, brother, please take that picture like I have with the other folks so that we can plaster you right there on the screen. As a proud supporter of politics, done right, a program that belongs to us all. AVQ says, Daniel, when the people come out with the millions, things again change every time. Peggy Lopez says, Hi, all. I better talk, contact binary KIC9832247 that has a slim chance of going red nova this year is just a little bit under 2,000 light years away. It's in our galaxy. I didn't know that, Michael. Thank you for the information. Uh, let's see, Dem Democrats and Republicans both search for materials with which to denigrate their political opponent. I agree with that. We need to stop it. 
Sherry Sexton Ledo, Global Utopia, yes, workers of the world, unite. Sherry Sexton Ledo, I, am, I love you, girl. That is what we want. The duck that quack says, Devin Nunes officially resigns. Two billion, a trampolini poop bullhorn. Still a great day for Congress. Uh, I don't understand that. Let's see. The duck that quack also says, uh, Twitter account can. Yes, I know. MG take or Twitter account get can. Uh, Peggy Lopez says, white tail deer tested, 87% found with COVID. Really? Wow. I didn't know that. May be getting into their drinking water through wastewater treating plants. We test effluent from some diseases. May have to add COVID. You know, I never thought about that, uh, Peggy. That, that does make sense. MTG, yeah. Mary, what's her middle name? I forgot what it is. Anyhow, folks, we have a great interview for you today. Uh, the fraud that, that occurred to us with Bill Back Better. We're going to play that, and then we will be right back in La Ola, my friends. Here's Marlon Weems. Welcome to another edition of Politics Done Right. Today we have a repeat guest, Marlon Weems, a.k.a. the journeyman at uh, medium.com. A man who spent 30 years in finance, 10 of those on Wall Street, global investment banks subsequently hired him to help them decipher developments in the financial and social economic landscape. Marlon points out that mainstream news rarely drills down enough to give a true picture of what's happening, let alone it all means that henceforth the need for writers like the journeyman is of utmost importance at this time. I am honored once again, Marlon Weems. <laughs> welcome to Politics Done Right. Hello again. Thanks for having me, Egberto. Well, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you, and I've been wanting to talk to you for several weeks now, but with the holidays and so forth, it was a little bit difficult to get all the things scheduled appropriately. Now, you um, you worked in finance. You you worked in the bowels of capitalism, where uh, where our work and worth has been traded in the form of stocks. Um, Build Back Better is not complete. Build Back Better, the policies that progressives and the president have been attempting to pass, has a lot needed, but it offered quite a bit. Many thought that we had an agreement that if we gave people that hardware, that capital within the hard infrastructure <laughs> that we are speaking about, that somehow we would have people say, you know what, we've been given capital for so long. Why not at this time look at humans as capital need and tender as well? Please tell me your thoughts on that. I'm going, I'm going to um, probably date myself age-wise a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, I grew up um, reading uh, Charlie Brown and, you know, the classic... Um, uh, scene is Lucy with the football mm -hmm. and you can see this coming a mile away and I have to say I really um, up until now have been if not a fan of Nancy Pelosi in terms of strategy and you know sort of getting it right this was one that I was really surprised to see her um, uh, maybe you know just sort of have a misstep because you could just see that there's, I mean, we point at Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema over in the Senate, but, you know, there's that little group of what are called moderate Democrats. You know, it's a, to me a, a loose term, but um, this was going to happen from the beginning. And, and I think that by and large, the progressives knew that. Um, but when the president comes to you and says, you know, I got this, you, you know, you got to listen to the president, I think. And so I understood why, um, you know, they didn't just block the bill. Because think about it. Had they shut everything down in the House, then, you know, all the guns would have been turned on the squad and, and so forth. So, you know, they tried to go the party line and look where we are. And it's to me... It's really sad. I mean, because there was a lot. Um, just think of where we would be right now had that passed, you know, a few weeks ago. I, I just think the trajectory for Democrats in the midterms would be a whole lot different. And um, 
you know, I, I got a lot of feelings about this. I was very disappointed. Let very me ask you in this way, because, you know, um, I am tired of blaming Republicans. Republicans are going to do what Republicans do, period. Mm -hmm. uh, they care nothing more than about capital, you know. Now, my contention is that the Democratic Party, yes, it's where progressives reside right now, but that too often there are enough tentacles from the plutocracy, from the oligarchy, from the corporatocracy in the Democratic Party, meaning the mansions, meaning the even even the secret, the senator from California, why, uh, 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 what's her name? Weinstein? Not, I forgot her name. Right no, now. no, Diane Feinstein. Diane Feinstein. Or Feinstein. Even Feinstein, even even with her not wanting to get rid of the sure. filibuster and protecting the flanks of the corporatocracy, we do have some as well that seem to be forgot who owns or who elected them. Uh, so at, at, at this point, I am not willing to blame the Republicans for anything. They'll do what no. they do. I remember back in the Obamacare days when we fought for first we wanted Medicare for all. The, the votes, we had 60 votes, a veto-proof majority in the Senate. We couldn't get Medicare for all. We said, okay, we progressives will just give in. Give us the public option or else. We can't give in, but we need a public option just to prove to the American people that the public sector is better for health care than the private sector. We absolutely knew that the public option would have degraded the private portion of the thing and we would coalesce into a Medicare for all by design and save the Americans money and save the American lives. Again, it wasn't the Republicans that stopped that. It was the Democrats. Now we go further now into build back better and we can talk till kingdom come. We decided to pass one using regular order and the other one using uh, what's known as um, uh, reconciliation. reconciliation. Okay, we decided to do that. Fine. Who's stopping that again? It's not Republicans. <laughs> it's Democrats. So yeah. my contention is we are satisfied, many in the Democratic Party, not a lot, or maybe not, not the majority, but many in the Republican Party are okay with having a sect of our population, meaning the poor and the left behind remain poor and left behind. Because all these policies that are the ones left behind are the ones that satisfy building those others back. Why is that the case, Mr. Weems? <laughs> well, I think you've, you've really, um, you've articulated it because, you know, you look at, look at a Joe Manchin, for example, uh, you know, you take away Alabama and Mississippi, West Virginia is uh, if not at the bottom, and we're talking about education, infrastructure, um, you know, jobs, health care, exactly. So his behavior uh, does not indicate to me that, I mean, he's not doing this, uh, you know, out of some obligation to his constituents, right? And so you take a guy like that, and, and I mean, and it's, it's pretty blatant, really. I mean, you got a guy with a yacht and a Maserati talking about, not, you know, um, uh, not one people, to, you know, the entitlement uh, thing, right? And so, um, you know, I think, as you said, you've got a lot of so-called moderate Democrats that are hiding behind Joe Manchin and Kristen, uh, Kirsten Cinema that have um, very similar opinions about um you know who gets to progress and who gets to benefit in this in this economy in this country and so um i just think until we get more people that are of a progressive mindset it, we're always going to run up against this and it's like you said it's not the republicans that are stopping us on voting rights it's not the republicans stopping us on build back better which in Includes everything from healthcare to climate change. I actually wrote an article a few months ago, and I found a quote from Manchin that was so, you know, just objectively false. Uh, he was actually in a, you know, one of these scrums that they have with reporters. He actually made the comment that 
you know, he he's kind of looked at this bill and his concern is, you know, they're talking about getting rid of fossil fuels and that's not going to help climate change. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, you know, what what scientist is he talking to? Right. So, you know, as I said, th he is really, uh, I think, emblematic of what Democrats do to each other. And I don't know how we go back to the same people who who got us where we are now in terms of voters. How do you how do you get folks excited now? You know, well, put more guys I, I, in. Do you know what I'm saying, though? How do yeah, you get I, them excited to show up at the polls, notwithstanding the, um, you know, just voter suppression that they're going to have to deal with anyway? It, that is an interesting scenario, right? And I've been trying to answer that myself. And I don't know that I have the best answer for it, but I, I want to pass something by you because I don't think, uh, you know, I, I don't think it is fruitful for us to talk about how do we get them to vote again, what I think is fruitful is demanding or, or asking them to, to, to vote again and support in the primaries those people that, up, that actually showed that they wanted to push this up and out. In, in other words, I want to tell them. I don't want to tell them to be depressed. I don't want to tell them to not care anymore because things are not going to change. I want to tell mm -hmm. them that they have to be the change agents, but that they have to build new alliances. And this is where I want to talk to you about um, how do we convince people? You know, I wrote a book a few uh, a few months ago called it's worth, it, it's worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relative Friends and Neighbors. My contention really is that a lot of those people that we call right-wingers, a lot of those people that marched on January 6th, they don't know what the hell they were marching about. <laughs> okay, They don't know how they're being hurt. And a lot of people say racism. And, you know, let me, t let me tell you something. I am, I don't care who loves me. I don't care who hates me because of my hue. I don't, but I do care that that person allows themselves to be hurt by a political system that is snowing them because by them getting hurt, it also means you get hurt and I get hurt. Sure. So my contention then is not to complete, to demean the folk. My contention is make them an ally. And in that respect, I have had this new way of speaking. And I think I've talked to you beforehand on it, where I try to let folks understand that, yes, I know that in a lot of these issues, the Republicans use the racist trope to have their people vote against their own interests. I want mm -hmm. to use that racist trope against them. I want to let their people realize that their folks are now making them slaves, what I call antiseptic slavery. And in, okay. and in the, and, and the way that I've, I've, I've started to, to hone in on that, and I may need, not I may, I need help from everybody else, right? We need help from any, everybody else to, to, to make this, to tell the story. You are, one who can even make it uh, in the in a capitalist modal because of where you worked. You understand that the capitalization of our excess labor is what makes a lot of people rich and us poor. When it was that the slave owner used black folks, indigenous and others as slaves, they had to invest in their capital, they had to invest in their slaves. Their slaves were their- Well, the slaves were property, you know, so, yeah. Go ahead. I, Take, I, it I, was I, like, it was, I'm sorry, it was, you know, for them, uh, just like, you know, taking care of a tractor, you know, right. um, and what people generally don't think, I think it probably more now than in the past is that, you know, it wasn't just the plantation owner that was, part of the financial chain there. You know, you got insurance companies up in New York that benefited, shipping companies benefited. I mean, it was the foundation of the economy, which because of, um, you know, just the awareness in 1619 Project and some other uh, writings, I think people are maybe more aware now than they were. But, um, you know, just to, to kind of go back to something you started off with in terms of um, you know, the, the people on the other side, right wing, if you will, that, you know, I have, I live, 
I live in North Carolina, but uh, I live in one of the more, I, I, I can't use the word liberal, so I'll say less uh, MAGA uh, areas of the state, but even so, um, you know, when the election was coming, you know, so this time last year, um, you know, one of my neighbors has a 50 foot flagpole with, uh, with a Trump flag flying, but when Trump lost, I haven't seen it since. So, you know, he's on that, you know, he's not so crazy that he doesn't accept that Trump lost. <laughs> on the other side, uh, just across the street, and, and again, the reason I bring this guy up is we're very friendly. So what should I, you know, I don't know if this is where you were going with this, but I don't know how much good it does for me to, um, you know, be angry with this guy because he flew a Trump flag when we can have a, um, you know, a civilized conversation exactly. generally, right? Across the street from me, there's a, a couple and it's, it really perplexes me because uh, the man, I would say they're maybe in their early 70s. They, um, the, the, uh, the husband is, I guess was born here, but his parents are from Italy. So, you know, these are not like, you know, guys that came up, you know, not hillbillies by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you know, Christmas rolled around, they brought us some homemade wine. I mean, they're nice people. And they have like this gigantic, let's go Brandon sign, or, or flag rather, flying <laughs> off of their deck. And you're just going, what the heck? <laughs> you know, what do I do with that? Because now, do they, are they unaware of the total con uh, connotation of that? Do they just think it's funny? I don't know. But honestly, it just. And I want to interrupt you there for one second. No, no, um, go ahead. Because I think you just, you answered it. They are unaware. People say, well, not really. They're just racist. It's not just racist. I mean, I had, I had um, uh, a, a couple of people discussing race, including Allison a few days ago. Sure. Discussing race and, and sort of making a point between racism and prejudice or whatever what you've proven i think when you mentioned they bring you wine and that sort of stuff is that they see you in a different light than you exactly see you right in other words you are there you earned your way there where you're living right now and somehow you may not be like the others because they don't understand the things that 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 we have all learned, let's say, from the 1619 Project, <laughs> redlining, from all those things. They don't understand how it made it, and they don't understand that those that have made it the outside of that system did it above and beyond the average person. Had you been white... Well, yes. and I, just, to, just to jump in, another thing, I don't think they understand or they have a concept, and, and part of it is because I may be in the case that I just laid out, the only black person they interact with. Right. Most of these people don't have, you know, like we have, um, you know, we may have several um, white friends that we interact with at work and we've had to, you know, figure out how to navigate all of that, right? They have never really had to do that because right. everyone there around with the exception of maybe me is just like them or looks just like them. Right. And so they don't really have a, a grasp for, yeah, even though I live in your neighborhood and you think I'm a, you know, I'm a, a good black, <laughs> mm -hmm. they don't know that on any given day, the same uh, racism can hit me right between the eyes that could hit any person that you see on television that's been shot by the police or, or you know, any number of bad outcomes. They just don't realize that could happen to me. And henceforth, and, you know, I, I spoke a little bit to Alison about this and to a few other people, not only in Woke, but in other places. And henceforth, mm -hmm. the job that we have as with, with platforms, um, I still have the contention that most people are good, right? I also have the contention that it is the system which have created, and if you listen to, there's a woman who talk about racism all of the times, and she talks about there's not any, there's not a race there's just a, the, the only thing is the human race. And she's right. And she explains a whole lot of these issues. I can't remember her name right now, but when I do, I, I'll put it out <laughs> probably with this article. But it's, it's important. To, and, and again, I, look, 
I am not saying there aren't those aren't those people that don't want to be schooled. They are staunch racist. Sure. They want to hold power. And that doesn't only happen because of pigmentation. Those are the same people who na naturally want to hold power over women, hold power, over, 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 hold, hold dominion over others. Right. But <laughs> as humans, I think when when one explains the commonality, when one explains that it is a system that is that is enslaving their minds, and with that enslaving them as a whole from a, from a financial standpoint as well, I think it's easier then to make the case, which is one of the reasons I like talking to you and, and others. And when I say talking to you, I mean, um, somebody uh, who knows, who unapologetically know who they are, and it's not scared to confront all sides. Because at times, <laughs> We have hey, to Berto, I'm too old to be scared anymore. Because <laughs> at a certain on, point, it's like, what, what are you waiting on? Right? What are you waiting on? And I mean, honestly, when I first began writing, um, you know, you have a little bit of you know, consternation or um, what's the term? Um, uh, uh, Hesitancy. You know, yeah. And, and so, um, but I've gotten over all of that. And it's interesting with uh, my Substack, The Journeyman, um, I actually have, um, to my surprise, two or three paid subscribers, um, a couple that I know from, you know, my, my previous life in, uh, in uh, New York. I know they don't agree with me, but they still want to hear what I have to say because, you know, from their point of view, it's, um, you know, I make a good argument. Whether they agree with it or not, they, they sort of like the way that I approach, uh, you know, whatever the, whatever the particular uh, angle is that, you know, on a given day. And so, you know, um, why, why hold back? <laughs> yeah, I, I like what you said, because believe it or not, on politics done right, I have what we call the PDR Posse which is a group of a whole bunch of people that if you take a look at our subscription page, you see that we have hundreds of people that support the program. And it's interesting. And, and, and I've just started building a Substack base. Like you have a good Substack base. I'm starting to build a Substack base and a medium base. And a, I've already right. had uh, my, own, my own personal base as well. But it's interesting that a lot of the supporters, a lot of the viewers are actually right wingers. Some of them utterly dis disagree Others want to have an exchange. Sometimes they change their mind. Sometimes they say, what if, but, or whatever, but they're there. And ironically, one of my highest paid subscribers is a right winger. And he doesn't. I, I understand. One of my very first, and I was, I was shocked. It was a, a gentleman that I worked with. He uh, had been, I think, previously an analyst at the Fed. So you can imagine, yes. you know, his conservative leanings, you know, from that, you know, that angle. And he was one of the first guys to, you know, to, to pay up. And I was yes. like, are you sure? Are you sure you've read what I'm writing? And, <laughs> you know, that that actually does, though, it kind of gives you a boost in the sense that, you know, you you. Uh, get a certain amount of validation, I guess, from, you know, and, and uh, I, I think too, it makes it, uh, I think it enhances your ability to, uh, to have a discussion. Absolutely. So I, I think what is important is uh, when you, when you make that cross, that, that cross, I, I don't want to call it a crossover because there's still a large percentage of those on the right that won't listen to you. But when you develop a rapport with some on the right, I think what happens then is they bring others with them. And even if they don't bring mm -hmm. them to you, they bring a lot of the, the smooth in, if you will, of thought to others as well. So I think, I think that is important that there, there are people like yourself, what we do here at Politics Done Right, to make sure that we, we keep every single person included. We want everybody included. Because I think the way to get around at the the portion of the Repu of the democratic party that continues to screw us all is to get a piece of the dem of the republican base to help us bring the right folks into the fold to do the right mm -hmm. thing now um we're running up on time here i always enjoy the discussion with you uh marlon give me a closer so that we can end this thing but i i've, I've really enjoyed what what you had to say today
Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you know, in terms of closing, I guess uh, things that I am looking at in uh, the new year, um, you know, the, the uh, January 6th committee, I just am keeping my fingers crossed that, uh, you know, that they'll make, have some public hearings and put some things out there to really make people aware. Because I, uh, as we were talking about earlier, I think that uh, a lot of people, you know, they know the buzzword January 6th, but I, I just don't think a lot of the country is really uh, focused in on just how close we came. So that's certainly one thing. And then the other would be voting rights, because quite frankly, if we don't uh, address that, and, and there's really no mystery about what needs to be done. And I, uh, I'm, I'm hoping against hope that Democrats will will uh, will do the right thing there because if they don't, I'm, I'm, um, I should have to think where where we end up. And a message to the voters for 2022. A message to the voters. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's sort of like you said earlier. Don't give up hope. Uh, I mean, I'm certainly going to vote as many times as I can. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, though, I'm going to vote. My my daughter just turned 18. She's excited to be able to vote for the first time. And, you know, a lot of people bled and, and died for us to be able to hold this thing together. And one of the things that, you know, one of my biggest uh, takeaways, you know, we're uh, in Woke having a, um, a reader's group that's reading through the uh, 1619 uh, book that just came out. And one of my um, uh, big takeaways is that, you know, Americans historically, or, or African Americans, I should say, have been the most American in the sense that we've believed when, um, you know, all the evidence was against us and we've, we've hung in there and fought for this country, you know, to, uh, to, to deliver. And so I think that's kind of a moment where we are now. Marlon Weems aka the journeyman check him out at substack check him out at medium this man knows of which he writes thank you so kindly for having <laughs> been on Podcast. thank you again for having me talk to you soon well folks i hope you enjoyed that but before i look i have a lot of a lot of comments that you guys have there i'm going to get to each one of them in fact uh, you guys, uh, I'm not going to do our other video because I, I, I think your comments are more prescient, more important than the video that I have. I'll do the, the next video tomorrow. Uh, let's go ahead, first of all, and um, do my ask. I think uh, I, I, I better remember that because, you know, it's that time of the year and we need to make sure that we are funded. So, folks, please go ahead. If you are, if you are uh, capable at all and you are on YouTube right now, I ask you so kindly to click on that join button and become a member. It's very inexpensive and you support something big and important, not just me. You're supporting the project. You're supporting what we are all doing together as far as getting the progressive message out, the message of empowering people. Please click that join button and become a part of our posse. Uh, there is no doubt that your contributions make a huge difference in what we can do in what, how we can promote, um, the, how we can promote the message, we cannot do it without you. It takes a lot, a whole lot. Uh, if you don't, if you are on some other network other than YouTube, please consider support. Uh, by the way, if you're on YouTube as well, you can give us a super chat. There are a lot of ways that you can support us, one time or monthly or however you think best to support the projects that we do. Uh, you can also go ahead and. Go to politicsandright.com slash YouTube, politicsandright.com slash YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, to go ahead and add that support uh, very much. You can also, uh, let's see, if I give you $5, will you go buy a razor? Or are you saying, I need to shave? You know, actually, let me tell you why I held off the shave. I just want to tell you that. Here we go. My wife gave me this for, uh, for Christmas and... I, I wanted to get some in, enough here to take care of that. That's what it's all about. So, if, 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 you know, I knew somebody, some, somebody would have a little negative thing to say about it, but it's okay. Anyhow, continuing, continuing. Uh, you can support us as well as a Patreon. Politicsandright.com slash Patreon. Politicsandright.com slash Patreon. 
Alternatively, you can support us with PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal. PayPal is actually one of the best ways to support us because you can either do a one-time or you can go ahead and do a monthly. Many of you have started doing that, very, that small monthly contribution, and I thank you so kindly for that. Alternatively, please go ahead and visit our store, politicsandright.com slash store, politicsandright.com slash store. Uh, you can also go ahead and get our books at politicsandright.com slash books, politicsandright.com slash books. Guess what? If you want to find out all the different manners in which you can support us, that is politicsandright.com slash support, politicsandright.com slash support. Okay, let's get on to the real business and not to the state of whether I'm growing a new beard or whether somebody wants to donate for a razor for Egberto, who's usually very clean shaven. Let's go ahead and get busy. Uh, let me go to the screen and start where I left off because let me tell you, I lost one of my screens, but since I know that they have a couple of bugs here, I keep two screens with, with these things running. So I'm trying to find uh, where I left off. I want to tell... Um, Melanie, Melanie, um, you should be, have been able to click a bell and anytime we're on, you get a text, not a text message, but you get a ding dong or something like that to say Egberto is going live or politicsunright.com is going live. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'm not sure what the issue is there, but we can talk about that offline if you drop me a direct message. Uh, let's see, uh, Peggy Lopez says Magellan Medicaid Ad Administration has been hired to take care of the public option for healthcare in California. Even Democrats are actively attempting to keep universal healthcare from reality. You know, I am sure glad that you said that. I am sure glad you said that. Because I, that is what, uh, if you listen to Marlon and what we spoke about, we wanted to make that clear. Let's stop blaming Republicans for everything. There are enough Democrats to effect change if we wanted to. There are too many Democrats that are also on the dole to the plutocracy. The duck that quacks says now, if Jim Jordan would fail, will fall by the wayside into the dinosaur pit, another trader out. Yes. Uh, the duck that quacks says shaky health insurance, shaky. Lee Grant says, if we had Medicare for all right now, would unvaccinated people be able to get health care? Yes. Medicare for all accounts for everything. It's our to It accounts for our our com all the, the good things about us and the bad things about us. What do I mean by that? A lot of us eat too much sugar. We get fat, we get diabetes, we're covered. A lot of us exercise. We have different fallacies, or diff different, uh, not fallacies, we have different uh, uh, evils within us. I mean, you know, that, that sort of stuff. And having Medicare for all smooths that all out. We teach how to eat well. We teach how to exercise. We teach all of that. All of that is a part of Medicare for All. Our education, trying to tell people live a better life, you feel better, but everybody is covered. But in a bifurcated system where a private sector Medicare company, medical company can say, I will only take the healthy people and leave all the rest otherwise, it creates a problem. It creates a problem. Okay. Uh, Tom C. Test 2021 20, plus one, same song, second verse, same as the first. We need a new song. End the filibuster. I'm with you again. Peggy Lopez says, again, the GOP turns the country right in all areas, and then the Dems hold the new right until it, it feels normal. Then the GOP again turns the country further to the right. Come on, 100th left monkey. Peggy, that is the statement of the day because you, got, you understand how it works. Uh, the duck that quack says, uh, para ver, para ver, restore the original filibuster or dump it all together. I say dump it all together. Lee Grant, uh, Michael Rudman to Lee Grant, what part of Medicare for all don't you get? Yes, everyone would be able to get health care. Todos, toditos, todon. Carl Cox says, Democratic politicians like Manchin is concerned that in earning more money for special interests, Democrats like Manchin, along with the Republicans, believe God loves the mega rich only. I agree that that's their psyche. The supply chain, E2247 says, the supply chain will continue in 2022, thereby also feeling goods and services becoming more expensive. No, 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 no. We got to we gotta work on that, though. We got to work on that. E2247, got to work on that. Linda Curtis, welcome aboard, my friend. Linda, I haven't heard from you in a while. 
Uh, don't we have a few things to discuss, my dear, beautiful friend? There's also issues you all can agree on having to do with economic fairness when it comes to candidates and parties. People get in their corners. And we, we need to get out of our corners and get into each other's corners. That is how we make a change. Uh, let's see. E2247 says, Hill Democrats are ready, already working on how to structure life and political will after Pelosi is no longer speaker. They need to. Sherry Sexton Lado says, unless the government decides to use healthcare as a weapon and do something like Russia. No, that's not true. We are the government. You see, the, the, the way people were hoodwinked, it's first bifurcate we the people from the government. If we can get you to think of the government as some other entity and not something you all control, then we can look at that government as some, something that wants to do us harm. The only ones that will do us harm are those who profit from us. The only folks that profit from us in our entire economy is not government. Government is us. It's the private sector who has to take a piece of every action. Am I against that? I'm not against the pizza shop holder, the grocery store holder. But I'm against a corporate guy who just sells stocks and people just make money off of stocks. They're, the reason why the corporatocracy works so hard it's because they fear what happens if we got an honest economy. An honest economy means you will never get billionaires. You could not get billionaires. There's not one person on this planet that has worked enough to be a billionaire. None. Niet. Nadie. Every billionaire has depended on taking the work, the labor, the intellect of somebody else or of a whole lot of people. And that's why we have the transfer of wealth. And the, the, the thing that we have to do is to teach this. We have to get deprogram people from believing that there's something innate in Jeff Bezos in that, that's so much better than everybody else. It's not. Jeff Bezos couldn't tell you is how that all the pieces of that rocket works. He could not. First of all, that was developed by your money decades ago. And then he goes ahead and adds to the knowledge with other people's intellect. Let's get it right, folks. Let's get it right. The Lewis Act. Let me see if I've, I've caught up on my other screen. I'm kind of tired stretching my neck here. But let's see. Um, Yvette, Yvette Avery Herod, welcome aboard. Yvette, great to see you along. I think I've seen you in this other screen as well. So maybe I've caught up. Maybe I've caught up. Yes, I have. Okay, uh, Peggy Lopez, Tom C. I got to Tom C. Lee Grant, I got to Lee Grant. Reddit Temp uh, says, Slaves existed back in biblical times, but you don't see Christians thinking about reparations. Um, you missed the point completely. Completely, completely, completely. Slaves have always existed, but there was never the kind of slavery that we're talking about, the, shatter, the, the, the shadow slavery that occurred in America in the form in which it occurred in America. And living within the same society with a, one group of people who built their asset base. And I'm not even talking about most white people. Because most white people are also, you know, and I, that is the other part that I'm, I was talking to, um, to uh, Marlon uh, Weems about. What I call antiseptic slavery. It's important. Because what the plutocrats have learned to do is they have learned how to enslave more than just one group in an antiseptic manner that you don't even know you are. All, all Bessus billions came from his slaves. All those people that made that much more for him to be able to take more than his fair share. He does not, he's not worth a hundred and something billion dollars. Nobody is. It's the way the economic system was designed for them. That's what, that's all it is. Nobody is worth it. But we have it instilled in our minds somehow that they are. And we got to get, we got to get rid of that. Carl Cox, welcome aboard. The Doug that quacks, welcome aboard. Uh, Carl Cox says, um, Democratic politicians like Manchin, it's cons I read that one already. Uh, let's, let's keep going. Linda Curtis, I spoke to you as well. Uh, preemptive surrender by Hill Democrats. It, you know, it's not preemptive surrender. It's paid surrender. Let's get our terms right, my dear brothers and sisters. It's paid surrender. These people, many of them surrender because they know after losing their election, they will be paid just fine. That's what it's all about. 
Uh, Michael to Cherie, like the right now, there are a lot of hospitals overwhelmed with COVID cases. If rationing happens, it won't be by the government mandate. It'll be by triage care. Look, most rationing is done by the private sector. When you when you are a part of a team uh, of a you know whatever the plan called um, the managed plan um, uh, HMO or PPO, right? That is rationing. But you see, when government does certain things, we call it they they give it a negative name. When private sector do certain things, they call it efficiency, right? PPOs and HMOs ration. That's what they do. They ration doctors, they ration drugs, they ration all these things, but they don't call it rationing. They call it, we create a plan where you are all a part of that plan. Go outside of that plan, we take you to the limits. Try to get another drug. No, we're rationing that drug. You're not getting that drug. You have to use this drug. That is the private sector that is actually effecting rationing on the American people. But you see, it's all about, and, and Republicans know to play the game better than anybody else, right? And, and conservative Democrats. They use all these words that mean nothing. The government don't ration. The government, can, the government can pay as much as they want, they are willing to tax the pilferers for. The government can. All right, uh, let's continue. The, uh, let's see, the, that, that, quite, let's see what else we got here. ABQ says, ready temp? No, that's an answer. Uh, let me continue. The heart of America is more concerned with why the DOJ sided with Dems during 2020 election. <laughs> the DOJ didn't side with anybody. Um, but there's an article in the New York Times that if I have... Oh, wow, I'm almost done with time. I can't do it. Carl Cox. Too many don't do what's in the best interest of the American people. However, with the exception of Cinnamon and Manchin, they will do things to help all Americans. GOP serve... There, well, I agree with you. How about November 2022? If if Democrats go ahead and get progressives in uh, in the primaries to beat out all those conservative Democrats, we'll have a big 2022 surprise, and it's going to turn this country around. But we have to work for it. It's not going to be given to us. We got to take it. We got to take it, and we have to be prepared to take it. Um, Abe, let's see what else we have. Color Canadian. Tar sands oil is the worst and dirtiest on the planet. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. I'm not going to argue about that. And there it is. Lado wants to give me five dollars. You can look. Give the show five dollars. Don't 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 try to allocate what it's for. You want to give the show five dollars? Give the show five dollars. You're here every day. I love to hear. I love to listen to what everybody has to say. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Carl Cox says gas prices because OPEC wants prices to rise because they want Trump. I'm going to do that other article tomorrow because it's a very important article. Linda Curtis says, the most effective coalitions are those that bring together groups with dissimilar, even opposing views on many issues. They are built not among friends, but among adversaries. But not only that, Linda, the funny thing about it is we, we agree on so much more than we disagree. And I mean conservatives and liberals alike agree on more than we disagree on. Tom C. said, Egberto, like the unshaved look. They haven't shaved today either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but yeah, I, I appreciate that. You know, you, you know, there are some people that will always want to bring, the, you know, try to get you with a negative comment. I, I flourish on those. They give me energy. They, you know, I, I flourish on those. So thank you again, Lado. Appreciate it, brother. Uh, let's see. The Duck That Quack says, I love vote by mail. I haven't missed one. I love it too. Peggy Lopez says, sorry, hit the wrong key. I haven't shaved since I was 13. So I paid no attention to others' body here. Oh, yeah, I love you, girl. Love you, girl. All right, let's see. So Egberto is saying that we all have to pay for the health care of everybody who make terrible health decisions their whole life. Most people make terrible decisions. Ledo, you are supporting energy companies that are killing most Americans. And we're going to pay your health care too. You are doing things that are killing yourself. You smoke. You smoke a ton. Every time we see you on our program, you're smoking. And I am willing to pay your bills if we get Medicare for all. Yes, sir. That is, that is a fact. Norman says, in spite of each setback we progressives have, we need to continue to do the work of being driven to do whatever we can 
uh, the lives of ourselves and our fellow human beings the best possible. This is no time like the pre there's no time like the present to put your effort in, even though the current Democratic seat holders have let us down. Obamacare would not have happened without the work from others have done from 1980 to 2010. It would not stay without McCain's thumb. Exactly, brother. Uh, let's see what else we get here. That a case you need a citation. More than 2,000 physicians back single payer healthcare system that would save taxpayers. My sister does as well. She's a physician. Who does? Uh, Eric Hayes, Egberto, is it not you to choose who is wealthy? That is for the market to decide. Who the hell is the market? What market are you talking about? The mythical market created by the plutocrats who use it to get rich? Come on. Understand economics, Eric, please. That's what I'm trying to teach many who don't already do it. In other words, I am the thief. I create a system that, that built within it steals from you. And that market system that steals from you, you're telling me to let that market system designed to steal from me decide who needs to be wealthy. Do you see this? Do you see where that takes you? My God, the indoctrination is difficult. Lee Grant says it's folks know the government is going to take them to, uh, if they get sick. The government is you. You decide if you're going to take your brother and sister in when they get sick. The government is we, the people of the United States, in order to create a better union. I am from another country. I not, I'm a naturalized U.S. citizen. I love America, and I love what it really is supposed to represent. We, the people, are the government. Oh, my God. That's not very difficult, is it? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Melanie Keaton, I never... <laughs> Melanie, love you, girl. Carl Cox. The wealthy make mistakes and don't lose out. Their workers do. Exactly. I could tell you a story that happened at rehab today with my daughter. I don't have the time because we're one minute overdue. I just have to say one more time. I ask you so kindly to keep us alive. Please support us by going to our uh, PayPal and helping us out, making sure that we are funded. Politicsandright.com slash PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal. You can support us on YouTube by clicking join and becoming a part of our PDR Posse or going ahead and going to politicsandright.com slash YouTube. I have to do this every show, folks, because we have to keep people, all the new people that are coming in, some of the new people that are re-upping, remembering that the contributing is a constant thing that we need to keep this stuff going. politicsandright.com slash Patreon. Like I put, for everybody who sends, uh, sends and support, I always say, we make sure and we are frugal with everything that you provide to Politics Done Right. And you can see it with our setup. We make sure and do it that way. My name is Egberto. Oh, let me give you the catch-all support. The catch-all support is at politicsunright.com. So support. Rodney, you're abandoning us, but this time you stayed the whole time. Love you, brother. Thank you for what you bring. Actually, thank you for what all of you bring. All of you. Left, right, center, middle, everything. I love what you do. You make this stuff worth talking about. And by the way, even those that disagree with me, you allow others that are silent to learn. Uh, the catch-all is that support. My name is Egberto Willis. And guess what, folks? You know how I am going to end this big. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And I am what? Out. <laughs>
I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will... We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.